Akansha, can you please press the syringe when I give it? Okay, so can you zoom a bit more to, uh, to see that light? Okay, so okay. Okay. So like this we inject the transgene into the testis followed by electroporation that involves giving 4 pulses of 60 volt each to both the testis, 4 reverse and 4 forward. So we will keep the uh, testes in between electrodes and then we we'll give pulses, 4 forward pulses and 4 reverse. Finally we apply this uh, providin iodine solution to, to the testes so that any damage that, that has happened with syringe should not enter inside. And this mice is then kept for 30 days more so, so for recovery and then finally after 35 days we uh, set the mating of this mice with a female and we, uh, uh, we expect the progeny to be transgenic. So welcome all, we will be looking into few model organisms which are already there in our department and we will talk to the respective people who are working on them. So can you come in? Yes. Just want to see. So. Uh, uh, you work on uh, mosquitoes as the model organism, so can you show us some, like how do you culture them? So we have, these are the mosquitoes in these cages. Uh, we are going to tell you how we culture mosquitoes. So this is the very first stage. So these black dots, these are eggs. So uh, we put these eggs in the, in the water and within three to four days, they hatches into lava, into larvae. So these are the larvae. So it took around uh, eight to nine days for larvae to emerge into the very next stage, that is pupa. So these very, these spherical, the round structures, the very small ones, these are the pupa. What these black dots are? They are eggs. Okay. And so these are around these, uh, so larvae are in three stages, the first insta which you are not able to say because they are very small. So these are around second insta larvae and these are the third insta larvae. So uh, after which they get converted to pupa as I have already told you. Then these pupa will keep them in the cages. Okay. These so are the cages. So these are the cages. In these containers we have pupa. Okay. So within two to three Within two to three days, they emerges into a uh, mosquito. So these are the mosquitoes. So mosquito feed on uh, sugar. Okay. So this is a it's sugar feed. Yeah. Okay. So this is a sugar feeder. So we put ten percent sucrose here. So uh, what, what, is, is, uh, what, what is what is this? This is basically yeah. The here we store eggs. Or okay. So. Uh, after uh, emerging into mosquitoes, within three to four days, they emerges. Uh, they, we, they we allow them to mate. So by three four days, they have ma already mated. So then we blood feed them using mosquito uh, using mouse. So these are the mice. So after blood feeding, uh, then after three days of blood feeding, we collect egg from them. And then the cycle continues. So, how this model organism is advantageous over the other, or what kind of questions can be answered using this uh, model? As so, as you all know, that mosquitoes are causing lots of diseases in humans, like malaria and dengue. So, our basic question is how olfaction plays a, a role in mosquito attraction to humans. Olfaction is the sense of smell. So, we basically study how odors. Uh, which odors are attractive to mosquitoes, which are repulsive to mosquitoes and our end goal is primarily to design some chemical methods or other methods which we can use to repel or kill mosquitoes and not so so that they cannot cause these diseases first. And uh, do some as our courses from functional genomics, uh, so yeah. we are recording uh, the 
with respect to that. So is this you do whole genome uh, gene expression analysis to identify like which orderant is uh, causing uh, enhancement or decrease in a particular gene or such, such type of studies are also conducted with this model yeah, yeah. they okay. are conducted but uh, we do not do them right now but yeah. probably we will do them in the future. future yeah in our lab we have two species uh, so this is a species which we got from Malaria Institute in Delhi and this is another species Liverpool so they are sequenced so their whole genome is sequenced so, so such studies can thank you so uh, this was Dr. Nitin Gupta's uh, team from our department and I think you all thank you thank you this is a room to maintain Drosophila stock and the room temperature is maintained at 18 degrees Celsius. So usually Drosophila is a cold-blooded animal, although, but uh, the temperature for their uh, you know uh, viable conditions is 18 to 25 degrees Celsius. It will not be either below 18 or above 25. So this is one of the flasks of Drosophila flies that are climbing. So. So this is a plastic bottle, so uh, below is the Drosophila food that we have uh, put inside. The food consists of nothing but sugar, uh, corn, flour and then yeast. So uh, and of course to make it as a semi-solid medium, so we add agar on this. So after solidification we put the flies inside and all the other activities like egg laying to the uh, you know formation of larva and to the pupa and the entire life cycle of this life is in this world. So we maintain lot of genetic lines uh, which are majorly we got from Bloomington Stock Center, Rosafila Stock Center in US. So and we maintain here. It depends on our need. Uh, this is a dissecting microscope so what we have down here is the the adult drosophila flies so these are the normal wild type flies okay just etherized using diethyl ether in a setup this was uh, just we made indigenous uh, drosophila etherizer so it is nothing but the cotton and then uh, a perforated uh, uh, you know plastic vial and over which a funnel was kept and it is nothing but you put a diethyl ether two to three drops like this. They can't, yeah. Okay, two to three drops, and since it is volatile, so through perforated uh, tube, it will go inside. And now put your flies over down, so it will get etherized. So now these are anesthetized flies, just kept here. And you can watch these flies under microscope very clearly. Now this is a female fly. Mm -hmm. Okay, so usually the female fly is characterized by bigger abdomens, okay. and uh, the size, especially the overall size, would be bigger mm -hmm. when compared to a male fly, which is on the uh, left hand side. So there are some body markers which you, we usually use to uh, differentiate male and female. And uh, this is a normal wild type fly, which has a red eyed uh, omatidia and there are many mutations which we used to generally develop developed and characterized uh, has uh, many genes which are mutant for body parts suppose if we have a mutant for a gene called white the eye color would become white this is one of the mutant fly it has uh, mutations especially in wing as well as in eye the color of eye would be white, the antenna and the omotidial eye uh, of the jaw. So what we supposed to do is before we we'll transfer back and do the fresh water. So this is this. For the next 45 days, it you can just yeah. So, do you also make mutants, or you? Do you Usually, uh, in this lab, we don't make mutants normally because all these mutants we, uh, you know, uh, buy from uh, Bloomington Stock Center. Okay. 
so they used to and suppose if we want to uh, generate any transgenic stocks india we have a facility in cc camp uh, in bangalore in cbs bangalore so there they will develop uh, the transgenic what are the mice. techniques uh, people use uh, in drosophila to yeah. edit the genome yeah main uh, technique that we use is the p element mutagenesis so uh, there is a uh, you know jumping gene that we call in uh, in biology called transposons so these transposons are the major uh, majorly used in drosophila transgenic uh, generating transgenic lines so what we have is we will genetically engineer these transposons we insert our gene of interest uh, then we uh, give and trace it in a plasmid and give it to uh, you know those facilities what they used to do is in the embryo stage of drosophila we have a cells group of cells called pole cells these are germline cells so they will do a micro injection of these plasmids into it so they are now this plasmid will integrate into drosophila genome so now the uh, next generation of flies will carry this transgenic uh, uh, flies so now we need to sort it out and then we will develop this that's what it's a major uh, so thank you thank you so uh, welcome we are in the chicken laboratory uh, where they use uh, chicken as their model organisms and we'll know from Tathagat how do they edit the genome or how do they insert foreign DNA into the chicken embryo. So I suppose this is the incubator where So you this is uh, the 37 degree incubator where we keep our eggs so that they can progress with their stages. So when we incubate them, they're in the very early stages, stage 0, 1 and then they progress through the days. So chicken takes around 21 days to completely develop into a full grown embryo. So what we do in our lab is, uh, like we have two labs, one working in brain and the other one working on bone. So we use viral DNA and we electroconvert the viral DNA into the chicken tissue. And because it's viral DNA, the viral DNA integrates itself into the chicken genome and then we get the necessary phenotype of each of the gene that we have studied or we want to study. Can you go in yeah. this this is the incubator. You have different uh, students having different plates, and as you can see, there is a window. Other if I show one of the plates. So what we do is we do a, we open a small window, and then we manipulate the embryos inside, and then we seal it up again with a cellotape, and then we again keep it back for the rest of the days, according to experience. Like if we need it in an adult embryo, then we'll keep it for maybe. 10 12 days. If you need it early, then we can harvest it in within three days. So, that's it. so, so we can now we can go to the electroporation. Ele There's a student who is already performing electroporation where we introduce the DNA with help of voltages. So, DNA being negatively charged, uh, so what we do is we inject the DNA into a pouch, maybe in the limb pouch or in the brain pouch, and then we use electrodes. It's almost like giving a shock, and the DNA moves inside the cell, and then we have the genome ready for being manipulation with the viral DNA. So this is um, our electroporation chamber. And this is uh, Baba, an uh, MTech student of Alna. Now what he is doing is, he is using the electrodes to put in his... You want to demonstrate? Yes. It is 12, you have to do something else. So this is the entire unit. This is the micro injector through which we introduce. You, you show. So this is the micro injector where we we use it to inject the DNA. So you have this uh, magnetic base with which we stick it onto the base metal base. You have the capillary tube in which we have our solute DNA solution, and we use pneumatic pressure pump through which we force in the DNA into the embryo. So. use one of the eggs what we do is at first we lower the embryos that is we take out some amount of albumin from the egg so that the yolk settles down and then what we can do is we can cut one small window onto the top and you have you can see the yolk now this is very early stage embryo as you and you won't be able to see much of the embryo but there is an embryo which is developing, it's very early stage, stage 10. 
so it's like uh, almost day one of incubation so it's just a speck of line what we do is we manipulate everything that we want to do in, in through the microscope and then we seal it back up with the cello tape so i'll just show what we do the first thing that we do is we'll set it up look into the microscope and we'll aim our micro injector onto the embryo so this gives us maneuverability top uh, and bottom left and right and with each press there's a pressure going into the pneumatic pump which forces DNA into the tissue we have a dye as you had seen earlier that it's a blue dye which we use so that we can see if the DNA is getting into the embryo properly or not and then when it's finally done we have two electrodes here and we direct the DNA towards the positive end because DNA is negatively charged and from the other end we place it just at the bottom of the yolk so we place one electrode at the bottom of the egg and the other one would be on top and then we have another switch here which we operate with our leg which would have this electroporator unit which is now set at 10 volts on as you can see it's the on time is 50 microseconds and the off time is 950 microseconds so it's the pulse rate of the voltage pulse that we give and it goes on for a total of five cycles that is five seconds so with one press it's the second count so it's one full pulse of five seconds which goes in and we use it for putting the DNA into the cell once it gets inside the cell we seal it back up and we keep it for incubation now obviously it takes around eight hours for the gene say we use a fluorescent gene a GFP or M cherry so it takes around eight ten hours for it to be shown so what I can do is I can show you some images which finally will find out the limb. Say so you have electroporated in day two. I'll just show a limb which is having green fluorescent protein. So you'll have the entire limb completely green. So as you can see, we are putting in green fluorescent protein into a developing. As you can, as you had seen earlier, it's only a streak at that point of time. But if you let it uh, stay on for a longer time, like this is a day eight embryo. So this was the limb in which I had incorporated the RKS GF. It's a viral vector with green fluorescent protein along with it. So because it's a viral vector and it's a virus uh, in essentially, so it spreads along the limb. And now the entire limb which I had electroporated is uh, fluorescent green label. As you can see, this is the green limb as you can see. And this one is the other one which doesn't have any such green fluorescent protein. So instead of fluorescent protein as I've used here, I can use different genes to study different aspects of bone development. And there are several other, like I use different genes to have different kind of phenotype and study how they are. So, and the similar thing is used for brain development. Hi Nilesh. Hello. Yeah. So uh, with respect to functional genomics, as in this model, how do, how do you maintain this model? And how do you edit the genome of this? Mm -hmm. For uh, editing genomes, you know, there are various technologies like uh, we said most of this one is CRISPR-Cas. That can be used in different tissues. It can be used. It has already been optimized for uh, this system. Uh, there are killing methods. Then uh, there are uh, uh, tall to uh, transposome based methods. Available, uh, we uh, we have CRISPR. Uh, okay. And why uh, this one is specifically red? Uh, is it like the natural this color of the fish? No, okay. that's not natural color. This is alpha actin A uh, G okay. uh, RFP. Oh, this is the RFP model. So red fluorescent protein. Uh, in the it is expressed. It is good. And uh, this one. Uh, this is a Casper model. Uh, okay. Basically, the skin is transparent in this model. So all the internal organs are visible uh, without doing any thing. In a live organism, you can see beaver and other. Can you show us one fish that you can some? 
the, the transparency of the body. So this individual is a female and if you look at from the sideways the bump white portion towards the tail or the eggs and the front portion which is a bit yellowish uh, that contains uh, liver and nearby uh, organs, pancreas. You see uh, a red like a red line going from front to the back. That red line is basically the fish kidney. So hope you enjoyed the lab trip. So the idea was to give you an kind of overview as to what are the facilities people use for genomic applications. And uh, with this session, we are concluding the 10 hour course called Functional Genomics. I hope you have enjoyed the course and if you have any queries or doubts, you, you are most welcome to write to us. We will try to address, but we will also be you know, taking up one last uh, 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 hangout session so we will we'll be able to interact more.